So here's here's what they were saying back in 2005. But if the right of free and open debate is taken away from the minority party. And if that voice sounds familiar, <laughs> it should. It's the president of the United States. But if the right of free and open debate is taken away from the minority party hmm. and the millions of Americans mm -hmm. who ask us to be their voice, I fear that the already partisan atmosphere in Washington will be poisoned to the point where no one will be able to agree on anything. The checks and balances Jeez. which have been at the core of this republic are about to be evaporated by hmm. the nuclear option. In wow. these cases, the filibuster serves as a check Read. on power and preserves our limited government. The nuclear option if successful, will turn the Senate into a body Feinstein. that could have its rules broken at any time by a majority of senators unhappy with any position taken by the minority. Mm, this nuclear option mm -hmm. is ultimately an example of the arrogance of power. So this president Jeez. has come to the majority here in the Senate and basically said, change Screechy the rules. Hillary. Do it the way I want it done. And I guess there just weren't very many voices on the other side of the aisle that acted the way previous generations of senators have acted hmm. and said, Mr. President, we're with you. We support you. But that's a bridge too far. We can't go there. Why have a bicameral legislative body? Why have two chambers? What were the framers thinking about 218 years ago? Uh -huh. They understood, Mr. President. That there is a tyranny of the majority. If the Republican leadership insists on forcing the nuclear option, the Senate becomes ipso facto the House of Representatives, where the majority rules supreme and the party in power can dominate and control the agenda with absolute power. I say to my friends on the Republican side, you may own the field right now. Wow. But you won't own it forever. And I pray, God, when the Democrats take back control, we don't make the kind of naked power grab you are doing. Oh, <laughs> wow. Joe Biden. He prayed to God they wouldn't do the same thing that they just did yesterday. Now, here's the thing that the Wall Street Journal is saying today. Him if he did. Here's what the Wall Street Journal is saying. Wall Street Journal is saying this morning, well, this is good for Republicans because the next time... The next time this really comes around, they're going to be able to to, to to fund Obamacare, not with 60, but with 50. Oh, really? The next time when? The next time when? The next time the Republicans, uh, the conservative Republicans have power? Really? When will that be exactly? Especially with Obamacare and how they are now, you saw this from uh, Project Veritas, where they are now, you know they're going to be selling all of the information to places like, you know, Project Texas. You know that's happening. You know that that um, uh, Obamacare is now registering people at the lowest income level to vote. Not the highest, not the other people that come in, but if you hit a certain threshold, you're asked, have you signed up to vote yet? So all of that information, all of that is being activated. Plus... You know now that it doesn't really matter because because of this filibuster, the president now can put in anybody he wants as a federal judge. And there's no real check or balance. So he can put anybody he wants in. Now, why is that so important? Because how did we repeal all of the things that FDR did that were unconstitutional? We didn't do it through the courts, uh, through the uh, Congress. We did it through the court system. It hit the court system, and the court system said, you can't do any of this stuff, and threw it all out. Yesterday, what did a court say? Court said, the Catholic Church does not have to abide by any of this crap. Throw it out. That comes to an end because of what Harry Reid did yesterday. That stuff stops because now you can really affect the law. Forget about Congress. Congress is irrelevant. They were a speed bump, and they have been flattened yesterday. And now it's in the court systems. And now in the court systems, you'll be lucky to have somebody who's not a Marxist radical. Uh, just to uh, clarify here to Cornyn, all Republicans voted the right way on this one. Uh, so, Including three Democrats. Two votes. Yeah. Two, mm -hmm. votes two votes. Um, well, I think the, two the, votes. Well, I think the confusion was the way it was worded was a, a nay vote eliminated the filibuster a yay vote was against eliminating the f filibuster, so it was a weird mm -hmm. wording. That might have been what uh, what happened there.
Yeah. Uh, but okay, it, it does well, appear that they were all that. on the right side, yeah. All of them were. And who were the three um, Democrats? Uh, the three Democrats were Manchin, uh, Pryor, and Landry. And Levin. Uh, oh, right, Levin. Levin. Right. Levin. Mm. Carl Levin. I was going to say. All the, all, Carl Levin? Uh, yeah. There are, there, there's, every once in a while, and I remember Robert Byrd used to do this. When you come at really threatening those Senate rules and the power of the minority they don't in the like Senate, it. they don't usually like it. That's Something why it's been there for 200 years. This They're... is why it's called the nuclear option. It's a yeah. big deal what they did yesterday. I mean, yeah, we talk you about notice them. when they did it? What? You notice when they did it? Mm-hmm. What they did is they did it on a Thursday. So the news really comes out on a Friday, the least consumed n- news day next to Saturday. Mm-hmm. Friday and Saturday are the days that you don't consume news generally. Uh, and then it goes into Sunday. The Sunday talk shows, if they even talk about it, the Sunday talk shows are not going to be consumed on Monday because Monday is the beginning of the Thanksgiving week. Yeah. And it, yeah, how, it's many a good time presents, for how many presents are sitting right now on Harry Reid's desk that says, don't open till Christmas? How many of those things, you got to open it, you got you to pass it to find out what's really in it. How many of those things are going to be passed now? right before Christmas or during the Christmas break that none of us will pay attention to. They've screwed us for the last six or seven years. It started with the light bulb ban that came from George W. Bush.